Hey there everybody, welcome to the midfield episode of the Titanfall CTF Survival Guide. Now there wasn't much of an intro uh, when we were originally recording this, um, so we're just going to get right into the recording. Um, it's pretty much just us talking about mid, uh, how to play it, how to get better at it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so enjoy, hope you learn some new stuff. Well, first things first, before everybody begins, you always have to make sure you're energized with uh, some proper Doritos and Mountain Dew. Yeah. Perfect. <sighs> Alright, Coach Angel, where you want to start? Uh, come down here. What I like to do is I kind of like show the start to finish. So, the first thing I'm going to go by is where you're going to be going at the start and what are you going to be looking for. Because the number one thing you guys covered at the very beginning is how important are kills and deaths. You know, if you get a death mm -hmm. towards a Titan, it obviously is not going to fluctuate that much during gameplay. You know, uh, yes, they will get a faster core, but that's not as devastating as getting a faster Titan. Because in most gameplays, you think you roughly get two to three max per round. So if some people are getting four, that means they're just constantly getting Titans, losing them, but uh, the sacrificing a Titan sometimes is a, is a flag cap when playing on mid. As much people don't understand, like playing mid is very important. Not not just dying, but being a distraction. Because if your flag runner is making a pull and you distract a guy for not long enough for him to have to reload, and then you're out of sight, the flag runner per se is out of sight. That's that's you doing your job. That's what mid's all about. And you know when you respawn, it's it's always having that mindset. Okay, restart. Now I gotta get to my position again. Hold it. Talk amongst yourselves, like, you don't have to be that aggressive in playing mid. Like, offense is the one that's trying to get in people's faces. Your job Holy. is to focus down on your job, which is just taking the kills, taking your time, making the right calls, and telling the offense player when to pull and where to pull. That's probably one of the important things to uh, keep in mind is aggression. Get too aggressive, and you're just going to end up dying too much, poke your head out too much, you're going to really give the enemy ground. And that's not something you want to do. Oh, absolutely not. Like, people just need to get that through their mind when they're trying to play. Is yeah, there's times to be aggressive, and there's times to just hold down their spawn area. And like every time you get those one or two kills, then you move up a little bit, and you're kind of itching your way up. You're not yeah. just you know wall running your ass right to there because once they know you're in the position, it's much harder to actually hold it. Because let's face it, anybody good in this game can take you out with an arc grenade, take you with a nether nade, or make a call out to somebody and they turn around and smoke you in the face. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's about being like sometimes literally just being stealthy and sh strategize your way through a certain positions. And the easiest way to explain it is knowing where the more common spots are based on their spawns and right at the start of the game. If I'm going to go to the spot every time, I always have an idea of what to expect somebody trying to come at me and try to take over that position. When you have that mindset of where you're going to be looking and what you're going to be avoiding to be seen, it plays a lot in your gameplay while playing mid. People are just too crazy and they just get to the spot and it's like, okay, I just saw you get to that spot, but you didn't see me because uh, you just didn't look in my direction where I was coming from. Now I'm going to be able to take you out easily. Yeah, so it's actually a lot more stealthy and um, and more cunning than people would realize. Mm -hmm. Offense so, really is like distract people, get them to look at you, so that person looks away from the mid position, turns around, and then I'm the one smoking him in the back. It's very easy to kind of time that. If you can hear like three, four shots in their base going off, this is a good time to move up. That's your awareness has to take over. You have to know when to be in the position because the sound in this game is unbelievable. You can hear things from such a far distance. And does it actually increase with your Titan? Like, can you hear further with your Titan than that pilot? It's roughly the same. It's roughly yeah, the same? Okay. The same. I kind of felt it was a bit different, but probably not by much. It has to do with your audio settings as well because you can turn off the occlusion, you can hear through walls, and it'll, it won't muffle the sounds. It's right. really bad, though. If you do that, you hear sounds everywhere. <laughs> I'm using it right now, actually. I did that once and I regretted it, and I was like, oh no, everything sounds really close to me, what do I do? Turn up to max, you can see dead people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your main mindset, Frothy, and like, Vespolo sometimes will play mid with me, in a pug, and he's like, oh, yeah. I want to switch it up. And, it, and he's like, I don't know how to play this, because like, he feels weird about it, and that's yeah. like the aggression, that's, I understand the aggression. Yeah. The one thing people don't understand is, it's a first-person shooter. Yes, this is CTF, 
but any any good team any, and the top players will hold your spawn down like champs and you won't be able to do anything. You'll be running on the ground because your spawn is so fucking far back, you have no wall to run on. Yeah. And you're just a sitting duck. And uh, the deaths are so important, people don't understand that. It yeah. is 100% important. Even with a pilot or a titan, they kill you, they kill three or four of your people and they make a pull, none of those four people are going to catch you. They're not going to catch a good flag runner. If they, as soon as they, they, all four people die at the same time, and he makes a pull, those four people are out of the equation. So if you have two or three titans up, okay, two people are going to stop a flag runner. Mm, that's going to be tough. Think of it this way, Frosty. It's Tent City. That's it. Tent <laughs> City. <laughs> not so much, man. Yeah. I've, I've been, I've been trying to like change my dynamic of play a bit, and I'm throwing people off. So maybe even one point when I was teaching people how I play. In the, my positions, mm -hmm. kept getting grenaded. Okay. Like, Anything? Yeah, that's that. That's like like one of the biggest things is you know, I mean, I did like learn a lot about how to play mid. But when you were doing your lessons, I did learn your spots. I did learn where you, like where you like to move, like what your mentality for moving is, like where you like to go. And I try to use that to my advantage. It doesn't always work, but a lot of times it, it at least lets me get a yeah. nade off on you and lets me push you out of your position. Absolutely. And when you get pushed out and you just fall off the top of a rooftop and all of a sudden you're on the ground again. Just time yourself. Time how long it takes for you to get there, and use that to your advantage when you're the opposite on, on mid. If I'm a mid player and a guy drops off, okay, now I know he's out of the equation, and you try and map what you're looking at, because you know when one guy's not going to be able to get you, and you have five seconds to take a look around. Yeah. Not just yeah, that, but if you're the one that threw the nade, or that's, if you're the one that peeled your position... You're also in a little bit of predicament, because you don't know where that person's going to move to if they bother moving positions. And that, and knowing, knowing, if you're more making the kills, it's actually easy to predict where they're going to spawn. Yeah. And then if you kill him in his spawn, now you know where he's going to spawn again, because it, 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 it does kind of like a triangle. It tries to search him around. It's not too often on Smuggler's Cove, for example, you'll get transported on the other side to spawn. It usually kind of like picks the middle mm -hmm. or the natural usual spawn area. Yeah, play mid's all about knowing the spawns as well. Like, if you can trap them in their spawn, then you got you got mid control. It's yeah. not about killing them all the time, it's just about keeping them in the spawn. Yeah, uh, keeping yeah, them yeah. away from, you know, flag routes. You're keeping, you're, like, you hit him once with an arc nade and he takes cover? Okay, turn around and start trying to focus on somebody else. Like, that, knowing when you have time to look somewhere and shoot someone else and then look back at that same guy you were just engaging is very, very key. Because now you have like eyes everywhere, and that's what people like to express when your awareness is always high up. Sprinkles did the same thing watching my streams. I just always seem to look everywhere, and I'm having this constant look around. And awareness is really, really high. That's why I get these kills. So when you say look everywhere, like are you actually like looking like in like 360s, like around yourself, just at all directions, or like what exactly do you mean by that? Well, for example, I'm not gonna if I'm if we spawn over here. On that side, and this is looking at me, for example. Yep. Why would I look behind me? You know, I'm not going to waste my time. You have to like to be the fastest to look around. Is I'm going to be looking to my right and then just shifting all the way to the left and not going too much further than that because I don't need to. Yeah. The people try and like look everywhere, like they're in some kind of panic mode. It's not necessary unless you hear a call out in your base because where your position is, you know where they're not going to be able to see you from. So why you're going to be looking behind you is, is just silly at the time. You have to be just looking forward, forward constantly. But you're kind of like, you're kind of gauging the entire area in a bigger wide spring. Yeah. Yeah, you get a place mark. Like, yeah. yeah, like if you're if you're on top of Angel and I'm just constantly looking at B, it's like, okay, why would I look over here the whole time? Obviously, some people are going to eventually come to my left and right. And, you know, like you got to constantly look back and back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Some people don't. They just like look in one full area, and they're missing the whole the whole point of mid is knowing the entire map and knowing where everybody is. Callouts are so much important. That's why you run three people on good mid or all on the rooftops. Nobody's really on the ground. <laughs> one one thing that I've heard Doc mention before. I'm not sure if uh, if he actually really does this or if he's just trolling or not. But is that like, a lot of times like if he's like if he's like like trying to lock down a certain roof, and he's like ADSing at one point. He'll ADS at like a corner or something, and then he'll be watching an entirely different roof. So that way he's got his eyes on the one point, but if he sees something like you know out of the corner of his eye moving in the center of his screen, he can just start spamming his trigger and just start killing that thing too. Uh, I don't know. I think it's I, just better not to go ADS. Like, like so, you want to ADS as little as possible so you have a larger field of vision. 
What, with the 40 mil? No, with any weapon. You don't want an ADS. You want to do it as little as possible. You lose awareness when you go ADS. It's like tunnel vision. Yeah, I, I know what you mean by that. But it depends on the gun you're using and obviously who you're shooting at from a distance. Hit the ADS at some point. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about Kush, but when I play mid, I depend a lot on Sam. So when people are like talking in the background or just like spamming, spamming callouts that don't really matter, then I lose control of mid because I can't play like I normally would. Yeah, if you're going to like talk about a team standpoint, if I'm going to teach any team to play, and I'm going to be very strict on what they say in the game. Yeah. Like obviously you're just playing a pug and you're fucking around, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, it comes down to, okay, they have Titan control, take them the fucking Titans. Don't be stupid. Yeah. Don't pull a flag. Don't be doing that. Unless it's like, I guess you can say, if you want to try and distract them a bit, get them to kind of turn around and be focused on the flag runner, and then you can start shooting in the back, get a couple extra shots in, sometimes. But most of the time, I'd rather you just arc grenade somebody. Arc grenade Titan, use a mag launcher to harass because every little bit of damage they take, remember their accuracy is going to go off. When you're a Titan, you're uncontested. I consider the chain gun and get 60 kills all day if I'm not being contested. It's too easy. But when I'm constantly pressured, it's so hard to keep your Titan when you're constantly blind by timing. That's all it takes is one arc grenade in the middle of a fight between two 40 mils, and the other 40 mil who's not blind is going to win. And people really need to get that standpoint and they got to mix parkour into their movements with battling titans is just try and hit them. You might die, but if you arc one arc one titan, that's a very serious advantage for your team. Because he's going to be blind and you're going to start taking him out. I find that anybody who has is, feels they're not the greatest at this, this game and they, and they try and be better is just work on titan control as a team. And be a pilot. Always take down titans, and your awareness has got to be up there. But take down take down titans in a group. Don't be like you know one on three, and you're just constantly dying. Yeah. Be with your team. Focus down that titan, and then as soon as it's down, you're gonna face another way where the other titans are, and you're gonna start focusing on them. And it's great when the I seen you do it, uh, Velo do it, and Thundercats is they start working with the LMG just to take down titans. And the 97, obviously, with that big buff they got against yeah. Titans is essential. It's very, even, very important. Even just taking off the cap of a Titan is useful. Even just doing that, because you can, if you die, you can uh, respawn right back up, get back on. They won't even know you're on, and then you can finish them off. This is the, the, yep. the idea behind the LMG is, even if a Titan does have smoke, you should be able to get off around, probably, I'd say, 85% of their HP. Yep. yep. I think it, I swear it gives you, go, you extra health. Maybe if you go it's just suicidal. Me. I find LMG users when they're rodeoing, they get like a little uh, health buff because my smoke seems to take forever to kill them. No, that's just that's just the paranoia kicking in. With, um, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the fear of the LMG is real. Yeah, but seriously, like uh, at least as an offense player, I know I know I'm kind of like I've got a lot of turn here, but like you know when I do pull an LMG like that, my mentality is okay. I'm an offense player. I'm gonna try. I'm trying to get in people's faces and kill them, right? If they're all in Titans, my shotgun is useless. So like, what's the point in me having a shotgun then? Well, I can't get in people's faces because they're in Titans. So what's the best way to get in people's faces when they're in Titans is a slammer. And like that's yeah. kind of what every offense player should be doing. I think is like if it's not time to pull flags, time to kill Titans. You should be Titan mop up crew. But yeah, that's exactly. That's kind of my opinion. Bellow's gotten like 10 Titan kills on Colony because it's so easy to get on a Titan when yeah. Colony. It's very, like, you just jump through a window and there's a fucking Titan. Yeah. Because that just makes sense, right? Because, like, the offense players are going to be the fastest, they're going to be the most agile, they're going to know just how to get around maps quickly the best. So why not I put mean, them on the Titan killing role? I mean, I mean that just makes just sense. That. Attack on Titan, man. I mean, it, it, it's also the fact that pulling a flag with multiple Titans up is not... not the best idea ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, occasionally, I'm not gonna lie though. Depending on who is in the Titan, I'd say that's the best time to pull. For example, you know they have a few shotties around. One of the defenses a shotty or something. You know he's really good with it. But in a Titan, he's so and so. He's like, oh, now's my chance. Then he usually sits in base with a shotty. If he's in his Titan, I know where he is. I get a good eye and I can see probably pull and get away. I mean, it depends on who's, you know. But yeah. Yeah. So like, so like the biggest thing here that I'm kind of getting out of this is, you know, communication with your team is important, but not having too much because you know, sound whoring is 
absolutely crucial. It's a lot more important to you guys than I thought it would be. Um, I don't think it's important to a lot of people, actually. A lot of people don't really take advantage of it as well as it seems like you guys do. Um, so keeping comms clear but important or um, but valuable is a good thing, but you do, you do have to establish map control at the beginning of the game, like we were talking about before, is you know you got to know where people are going to go, how to counter them, and you know establish that map control and get them in their spawn and contain them there. So I guess just kind of go through from the start to finish. How do you guys establish that from the start of the game? How do you hold it in the middle? And then, you know, when, when it gets to be the last 30 seconds, you know, what is your mentality for either keeping it or aborting it just to go for a flagpole or something? Okay, I'll give an example. So when you're on this side, or obviously you spawn here, and this is where you start. Right off the bat, my first instinct and my first position is that what I'm going to be holding is angel rooftops and then taking my time to go down to star. And there is where star... That's where I'm going to be holding my main position to try and take them out in terms of holding their spawn well. And that's hitting the star tower, the very high star point. And to do that right at the start, obviously you come over here. Whether you get a wall around the side. Now as soon as this starts, you will be able to get here fast enough. Or you're going to be able to see the opposite side team either come through star to look at you. Or the guys that are going to be on top of B building trying to go around on the right. That's what you're going to be looking for, and you're going to take you're going to take your time to make those callouts. And when you make those callouts, you see that you pick off one of them, trying to jump across, or you're going to come up top here, see if anybody's going far, far left. Because you've done that a few times, Frothy, where you come far through the canals mm -hmm. and trying to come around, and that's where you're going to try and pick people off. Yep. And when I always talked about positions of where you're going to be positioning yourself to not be seen, it's you're going to come through here and set up to this left side. And why are you going to be sitting over here, Frothy? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Which why are you going to be sitting over here? There you go. Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. Why are you going to be coming over here is going to, you're going to be avoiding anybody on top of Star. They're not going to be able to see you from there. Yeah. When you come around here, you're going to it's basically just kind of ninjing your way through. Like you're going to yeah. silently squeak through, and that's the route I normally take when I'm not under fire from somebody trying to go to slant. Because you need to take down the slant guy who can rush there, because they can kind of get to slant as you get to this area, yep. and that's where your gun battle is mainly going to be happening. Yeah. So that just kind of gives you an insight of, of what to expect, of how to move up and take your time with it. Because you take down one guy in slant, and you take down a guy in canals, maybe one more will be on you. Because the way the team spreads out, I, I don't recommend a whole five-player push right out in the same area. Yep. Because if you all five of you die, like good luck. There's going to be a serious pull happening quickly if you, all five people die. Go, who all went canals? Yep. And that's 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 the difference between a, a good mid player and a decent mid player. Is the good mid player knows for sure that as soon as those five people down, he's going to call out a pull. That's what the mid player, in my opinion, is is going to be calling. If, yep. if the offense player says he's ready, you're going to say pull right the fuck now, and you're going to tell him where to go. Yep. And what I would do is if on this side, I kill five people in canals. I'm going to tell the guy to go right through middle, right through here. Because mm -hmm. they're going to spawn all the way far back here on the left. And if you're on this slant building, you can just pick people off. And if you can't pick them off, you're going to distract them long enough that they have to shoot back at you. And that'll be just enough time for you guy to make a pull. That's just a simple bang bang play that you need to be aware of to make the call out to make it happen. And that's like a huge thing when it comes down to teamwork, is because like little things like that you practice. The offense player has to, you know, obviously trust you and just make the make the pull right away when they can. Yeah. The kill feed is most important thing, and the one thing I want to talk about anything playing mid. What you're going to be holding is just really paying attention to the kill feed and who dies. I pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Vespalo and Thundercat said that, but I pay attention to who dies. Actually, I told you a few times that pugs started happening or getting harder for me. Mm -hmm. It's just because I couldn't understand people's names. It was all in these weird names, and it was harder yeah. for me to think rather than that quick action to say that Frothy's down yeah. or compare it to Wu-Tang being down. Yeah, so we did talk about that in the offense video a little bit. Um, the main thing that we covered was that, at least with those two, they don't really look at who was killed so much as how many were killed, right? And we try to figure, yeah. like, you know, how many died and where did they die? And that's the most important thing. Is like the names don't matter so much. It's just how many and where. So then if they see, you know, if three people died all at the same time, and it was either, you know, if they if they notice that Thundercats killed three, they okay, I know where Thundercats is, he got him in their base. Or, you know, if they just see three die and they see a bunch of death markers, then they know, okay, we can probably go for a pull now, or we can just push into their base and be aggressive here. So, yeah. sounds like a similar kind of thing, but it's just a little more involved for you guys. Yeah. 
I'll give it the, the best insight I'd say when it comes to callouts to simplify them is have your mid players t tell the offense when to pull and defense obviously to say when base is clear. Yeah. It's the easiest when it comes down to communication because if I notice Wu Tang is down on my defense, on my mid player, so now I say if it's clear or not. Like you don't want three people saying it's clear and then also one person says it's not and you might not catch that, right? You don't yeah. want too many people talking. Simple example is the offense isn't going to ask if it's clear. He's going to hear about it. It should be automatic. That's like yeah. one communication, not in team speak. Is yeah. if the offense player doesn't have to ask. He knows they're going to tell. Him. Yeah. Like, is it clear? It's like, no, no, no. We're going to tell you if it's clear or not, no matter what. Yeah. Like, that's one communication that I really wish was more automatic for people. Because, like, if I'm on offense and I got a flag coming in, right? Like, I hate telling people, get back to base, get back to base. Nobody's there, get back to base. And I hate telling people that. It's like, they should know. They have a flagpole and we're halfway there. Get back. Like, you got to clear it. Like, <laughs> it's a communication that shouldn't be happening. It should just be automatic. And, and that's what it comes to the minimap. Like, for example, right here where I'm looking, where I'm standing, look at your minimap. Now, when you, mm -hmm. you can kind of mark this off in your video if you want, and I can literally just draw it out for you and kind of yeah. edit. If a guy's going to pull right through Main Street, which is down through here, yep. and I see, I just look at my minimap. I don't see any blue dots or any blue uh, arrows in my yep. base. My, I know my team's not there. I'm not going to make the call out to ask. I'm going to look at it and be like, shit, i got to pull back. So yeah. as you're going to be covering mid, you're also going to be trying to like, pull yourself back here Yep. to see if anybody's in your base and then you're going to try and clear it you're going to cover the fastest way which is parkouring and jumping through the air I find people are too stationary when they're trying to clear a base and look but the fact of the matter is you got to learn to parkour and aim at the same time while you're yeah. looking because it's the fastest and most efficient way of really securing a base same thing with getting to your offense like or getting to your mid position you get there but get there quickly as fast as you can to obviously hold it the best the best way possible without being seen. So I noticed that you use cloak a whole lot in your play. Um, a lot of mid, like I think a few more mid players are kind of at least experimenting with it more more so lately than they ever have before. Um, why do you use cloak instead of stim? Like why do you think that that's the better choice for you? And you know, like like how do you justify not being able to take the extra bullet that stim lets you do? See, that's the thing. It, I found a lot of people just seriously lack the confidence. They lack the confidence of playing in mid position based on who they're facing. So, like, you know, like if somebody's going to face Rep, Andrew, and myself, or Velo, Wu Tang, they're going to be like, oh shit. Uh, uh, like, they just, some people change their gameplay up. And from a cloak player to facing a stim player and stim constantly saving them. It's actually going to make you better because for one, you're going to be hitting them more often, and you're going to. And if you win those gun battles, obviously you're doing something well. But cloak is for me is to get into my position. I don't need stim to get there. Stim absolutely is great for offense players. I understand that. But if you're going to be a permanent mid player and you're going to run how I run it, that's how I do it for, to get in my position. And cloak gets you there sometimes. Cloak does mess people's aim up when you're parkouring and you're very very fast. It does mess them up. Titans especially, you can walk right past the Titan with Cloak and just get into that position that you wanted to, to cover a flag runner or to take out their flag runner. I've done it multiple times that I've walked past the Titan, probably thought they were clear, and they were all clear, but I got past them and was able to kill the flag runner and get the return. And that's what people need to understand, that that's why you use Cloak, is to, to get in your position and hold it. I arguably, like, like, like obviously Stim is better in to so many ways. But uh, it's also sometimes get you killed. Because yeah, you're constantly being seen by titans and you can't get around them. Yeah, and plus it's really loud too. But I guess so is the cloak activation and deactivation is also really loud. So. I would say it's a little bit quieter, but yeah, it's still fucking loud. Yeah. Now what about radar pulse? Do you ever find any use for that? Do you ever even try it? Or do you just think it's just not even worth it? If trout was still hey. around, I'd use it. Because that fucker was so good with it. It honestly is... The ch if you get used to active radar pulse and use it on Demeter to hold mid on core, mm -hmm. game over. Troat was the best at that, because he would use active radar pulse, I would hear him as clear as day, because it's so loud, mm -hmm. but he'd always get the first shot off. I never liked it, because it was a lot harder, like if anybody was new, I would say don't use active radar pulse first, you have to get used to that, because it does throw your aim off a little bit when people are really fast. Yeah. The constant little, like, you know, delay red thing that body it shows behind is, is tough to pick up 
Yeah. But I, I implore anybody to use it because the first thing about active radar pulse is you can kill three people and it's active three times. The second you shoot your gun with a cloak, it deactivates. Yep. It's unfortunate. I was hoping that, like, you know, when you use cloak, say you used only half your bar up, as soon as you start shooting, it starts recharging from that style instead of restarting all the way to the that'd be pretty, Yeah, that'd be pretty crazy. I mean, I, like, I think that it wouldn't be terribly, like, OP if, like, you know, it would be kind of like maybe almost like a Halo-style cloak where, you know, it, it'll cloak you, but if you shoot, you lose it, but if you stop shooting, then it reactivates, you know, for the duration that it still has. Yeah. Like that would be reasonable. Like I would, I don't, I don't think that that would be like an unfair buff to it. Like I think that's fair. It's kind of, it kind of, it's really unfortunate. Like when I'm using a an LMG and I got cloak, it annoys me so much. Like I take one shot and I just activate a cloak and I just lose the whole thing. It's like, well, yeah. now I'm ineffective for the next twenty seconds. I can't even do anything. Oh God, Bill. I would, I would even say just from simple gameplay, I notice a lot of people do is sometimes they freaking forget they have grenades, or like if. If you're in a Titan, for example, I'm in a chain gun, some guy's on top of angel rooftops, and I'm in the middle of the street down here, there's no way I'm going to be able to get him. Once you get out of your Titan, quickly, toss two grenades up, get back in your Titan, and you get that kill. Yep. I've done that, and it works a hundred times, because if people are up there, and you have good Titan control, they're going to sit up there shooting at Titans a lot. Yep. But the second you do that, they're, they're not going to be able to get out of the way in time if they're standing right in the middle. Obviously, if you throw it properly, it's just a matter yeah. of getting used to the game of how to throw and understanding of how high you can actually get them. Knowing a lot about the map of playing for this game for so long is obviously so so useful when it comes to knowing parkour routes, uh, knowing where to shoot, knowing how far things are, knowing when you're in, like, how far are you away. It's like, okay, I know he's on, he can't throw a grenade this far. Because I won't lie, I've been on slant route before and somebody's throwing a grenade over there. And he actually got me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so and like you like can't can throw really? that far. In it. Yeah. No, a uh, gr uh, grenade. Oh, like a frag? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah frag so that far. So stupid. What's awesome is you is like when you're throwing at that distance, you don't even have to cook it. Just toss it. It's great. Yeah. And it's so fast, too, in my opinion. I think it's really, like, really stupid fast how fast you can throw a grenade. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. I feel like I have fast hands in Call of Duty. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to cover? Um, I guess just like maybe maybe Titan Control a little bit. Um, I, I was kind of thinking that like maybe Titan Control could just be its own kind of episode, but just as a mid player, you know, where do you want to position yourself with your Titan? Like, when do you want to drop? Like, do you want to be the first one to drop? Like, say for example, you know, you roll out, you know, you get a good position up on you know your base roof and you kill like four or five guys. You know, you you just have a really strong start. You have your first Titan ready. Would you drop it right away with a chain gun, or are you gonna hold off and like counter their drops, or like, you know, is it map by map? How do how do you do that? Well, Titan Control, honestly, it, it, sometimes I feel people are really aggressive with their Titan and they just seem to lose it. And obviously they'll call you a camper if you're just going to sit there with your Titan picking people off. But like I said, it's always a, it's still a first-person shooter. If you're constantly picking people off, it's so much easier to make flagpoles, make the call-outs to, to make a flagpole and tell them to go there. And I wouldn't mind getting away from getting on Titans because I find people are so, like, like Vespolo and Thundercats are so fast that I prefer them just wall run, and then me shoot at people with my chain gun, they're not going to be able to touch them. Because sometimes it's very it's very easy to get away from people when you just got four people dead, yeah. and you make a flagpole, and you're a titan that's stationary covering mid. It's so much easier with the chain gun. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely different for Velo with an arc, and then Wu-Tang with a 40 mil, when you think about us playing together on mid, all three of us. It's really, it's a, it, I think it's an in-depth thing when you're talking about Titan control of how to maintain it and then switch to mid now. I would definitely save that. I can go, I can go on for hours talking about how to play, use a Titan. Yeah, so I think that's definitely would be a great topic for like a whole other video. It's just Titan control overall. 40 mil for me is aggression, arc cannon is strategic, and arc t and chain gun is support. Like, I'm supporting all my Titans. I'm never yep. engaging a Titan one-on-one -on -one who has a 40 mil arc and I have a chain gun. Why? Because you're dumb. You're going to lose. Mm -hmm. So it's better to pull back a bit, look at the minimap, see who's around you, support him, and then, you know, hey, let's go take care of that Titan that's in mid because uh, I got a chain gun. Let's face it. And if you're going to be talking about a team t from a team standpoint, one chain gun, uh, four, uh, five, or four 40 mils, and then one arc cannon. 
Yep, and that like usually seems to be a strong. Yep. yep. It's very strong. That's I don't want two chain guns, unless it's like a certain map where you can sit really far back. Yeah. Because it does have its advantage with chain gun, have its max range damage is really good. Yeah, it's you barely lose anything. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But 40 mils, like let's face it, sometimes it's 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 hard to hit people really far back. Absolutely. All right, so I guess like another thing that I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit too is, you know, if you're gonna be playing mid, you're gonna be running a carbine or a G2, you know, or you know, if you're like if you're ridiculous, you're gonna run it in a, a the what is it, three run burst one, the hemlock. But generally, you're gonna be running, you know, G2 or carbine. You need to have a really good aim, right? You need to be able to track well. You need to be able to you know pick your targets effectively, um, and that's really difficult for a lot of people, especially in this game because of how quick you're able to move around and how not wide targets are. Like targets are tall and thin. And this is hard to hit people, especially when they're doing like that strafing left and right. So like, what kind of aim tips do you have that people can, you know, improve their aim and just get better at shooting? Well, first thing, uh, Velo, me and Velo play two different styles with a carbine. He rocks iron sights, and I do I do H cop. Mm -hmm. And I always use the same thing for all my guns. So I'll use H cop for my 97 for my car because I don't want to not get used to it. You want to keep it the same segment if you're going to be playing serious and you want to beat people. That's when you start switching up your roles all the time and you're not getting used to it, it will affect your gameplay a bit like playing any other game and then coming back to Titanfall. Yeah. But that's like a... How to, how to aim well? I would say start slow. Sensitivity, get that down. If you ever have a doubt in your accuracy as opposed to someone else, then it sounds like your sensitivity needs to be toned down a bit for you to get used to it. And hell, even equipment is essential. People think mechanical keyboards aren't a difference. I found a huge difference when I got mine. That was when people started saying I was good, so... As for sights, I use many. I use H hog, I use iron. I'm a freak. He's a freak. But uh, I actually, there's, I, I've recommended for a few people that helped me a bit was uh, accuracy training, like websites. Mm -hmm. It actually does help. Let's say, for example, you needed a warm up and you started with that. It actually works. It helps getting used to uh, your bit of aim when you just kind of practice a little training for like 10 minutes playing your own time. And it sounds nerdy as fuck, because it is. But uh, if you want to get better, that's honestly what I recommend. Uh, is take the same path I did, and that's what I taught to anybody who I teach in this game. And it's worked out for them, for sure. I yeah, never did so it, Mac. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to um, send me a URL, and I can put it like in the description, just kind of link people to it, so they can yeah, try it I got plenty well. of stuff. I'll even have a screenshot of what I have on my monitor that people think is cheap as fuck. I use a completely different training method. Uh, I just go into CSGO, they have a training simulator that you can download for free. And it's all I use to, to just warm up. And you can change your sensitivity to the same sensitivity as your Titanfall, and not just your DPI. So I find that's a lot better, it's like a lot more consistent. I just shoot grunts and play attrition. Yeah, attrition's <laughs> really good too. You, you just have to be able to aim fast. You know, if, if people think it's 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 iffy, but honestly, shooting grunts is good practice. Yeah, people think it's stupid, but if there's a group of grunts, I always do the same kind of diamond pattern. I'll shoot the one top, right, bottom. And I always do that and work on my snapping where I'm just like, I'll try and pick up the speed of how fast I, I finish killing them, and then you're recognizing immediately he's dead, and then switching again. Practice that, and it actually helps a lot. When it yep. comes to killing somebody, all of a sudden somebody else is on another top rooftop and you snap towards them. That's what everybody calls us hackers, just because we snap. Uh, um, bend and snap, bro. Yeah, we actually, we actually came from attrition. Uh, when we first started, everyone played attrition. Yeah, I play attrition. No word of a fucking It's how lie. we got our aim down, yeah. <laughs> it seems ridiculous, really? but it works. Hulk. Yeah, we, we've played that like a bunch one CTF. Oh my god, you guys are monsters. I yeah, freaking we're... started off attrition. I was like, nah, okay, this is getting pretty boring. I gotta throw myself in variety packs. Like, man, these these game modes are great. You guys yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that's honestly, I think attrition is just a training mode. It's not really like it's good for anybody else. who just starts and they're not, they don't have any friends. Simple as that. <laughs> <coughs> Me. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, but going back to the grunts thing, like, I, I um, definitely use that a whole lot. Like, if I'm, like, especially when I'm parkouring, like, it's great aim practice while you're parkouring, right? It's just, like, to get into an area where, like, grunts are and there's a lot of walls, just start parkouring around in circles and just try and, you know, just jump around and kill grunts. You know, you know aim, it's, aim actually, down sight. it's actually a little difficult hitting them sometimes because there's some, sometimes they're unpredictable. Sometimes they fall to the ground, sometimes they move erratically, and it, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, well, real pilots move erratically, too. You want to yeah, practice kind of uh, fast moving mm -hmm. goose, like you know when uh, when you're goosed, right, and you pick up speed as you fall. You want to practice hitting people as they fall very fast. Try and hit specters that jump up to a building, and there's your simple little training right there. It's yeah. not easy when they jump, but if you can like hit three or four times, you get better. Like Frothy, you can actually remember that video I sent you where I could clearly dust that guy falling. Yep. That is a exact reason. Why I can hit goosers like that, falling that quickly, is because I practice on specters. That jump. It's like just little things you can do on your off time while in the middle of a game. Hell, even during a pug, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and like what you could do is like, you know, is even if you want to get in with a couple of friends, you could just turn like a map to uh, specters only. Have your friend just keep hacking specters, and they're going to follow that person, right? So you can just like jump off a building, all the specters follow them into the street, then you can parkour up to the very top, and they're all just going to take the easy specter route and jumping straight up. And you could probably practice that way too, if you really wanted to do that. Absolutely, or, that's just I, that's just adding it up because specters are actually e better to shoot at than grunts because they have more health than pilots. Oh, yeah. So pilots, yeah. shooting lots of uh, specters helps your aim because you're essentially on the target more. Yeah, but I guess if you well, and again with my suggestion, if you were to do that, you might as well just have a friend just to check from Titans and just practice actually using them. Like <laughs> I don't know, but either way, it's all good. Yeah, stuff. it's basically the more you do it, the better you are going to be better at it. But uh, definitely what people lack of in this game, I think, is just a mindset of what they're doing. Yeah, because like, they're not used to like thinking a lot, right? Like a lot of people, like I know a lot of people that play this game come from like Call of Duty and stuff, where, you know, they weren't competitive players. They're not used to thinking. They're just used to just playing and just shooting stuff as it moves, you know? And like that's just kind of how everyone does it. Like some people would be more aggressive than others, but the main thing was like, here's a power position. I'm just going to sit here and kill people. And if I die, then oh well. I'm going to respawn and just try again then you need to be a lot more cerebral about it. Oh, definitely. There's a bit more, a bit more to it when it comes to holding positions and teamwork, especially. And, you know, some people will get it and some people won't. And uh, they're just going to keep at it. Because, I mean, geez, we were shit at one point. Yep. We're all yeah, if you really want to get your aim down, it's about muscle memory and just training that muscle memory. Oh, let's face it, if you really want to get good, you carry three arc nades. Yeah, oh, another thing, it's... But more about the arc nades. When you're playing mid, you don't you don't use them to spam people and just kill them. I actually use them to flush them out of positions, or you save them for like the titan caps. So you can take down the shields and kill the flag. Yeah, you yeah. don't always have to use two guys. It's not yeah. Like, don't be, spam. I, I with taking a flag runner, I always actually throw one and then shoot, because all you gotta do is get two shots on an arc nade uh, damage, and uh, the, the pilot's dead. Yeah. Plus, yep. just think and about this way: one. like if you if you're trying to shoot, <laughs> if you're trying to, to catch a flag runner. Uh, you're not the only one going to be throwing nades at them, so you don't need to throw more than one. Like your teammates are going to be spamming them as well, and they're still going to eat four of them. So don't waste them. Yeah, uh, don't rely too heavily on ordnance, or else you're going to be that guy. Yeah, just yeah. spawn. Yeah, you, you, you're gonna spawn, do... spam, spawn. <laughs> you're going to need to. Don't be villain. Actually, yeah. Well, that's how I used to be, to be honest. I still do it occasionally, depending on, you know, if I can get an angle on the person, but usually one and shooting or uh, listening to where they are is good enough. Just giving away their position is or just giving away the position or flushing them out is good enough for me now. Anything else you want to cover? Um, I th well, I don't know. I think that's kind of like a whole lot of it. It's just, you know, just practice your aim, you know, just be really methodical about your pushes, you know, try and practice each map, um, you know, find areas that work for you, you know, just, just kind of like about moving and counter moving, right? Like, don't get too aggressive and don't die. Yeah. You can also um, play mid with an R97 on certain maps. Actually, yeah. on a lot of maps. Yeah, and it actually works out a lot better because you can you can get the jump on carbine users and they won't be able to kill you. And then you yeah. just take their carbine if you really need to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Overlook and um, uh, what's the other one? Relic come to mind. Overlook, like Demeter, um, anything that you can parkour well on, you can use it.
Nexus is good for it too, considering how many how many like locations there are where you can just drop down in between the buildings and just get back right, right back up. All right. Well, I guess that pretty much uh, that pretty much covers it then. Um, I don't know if um, Kush, if you have any particular clips that you wanted to send or anything like that. I'll look through my games as well. Um, I'm sure there's something I could use in. Uh... Well, I'll see if I can get something new. Um, yeah. One other thing I guess we didn't cover would be cover. Yeah, it's like head glitching and stuff. Yeah, head glitching and, you know, find what you can. Even just a small AC unit on the roof will help. Provided it yeah, we, didn't, we didn't cover stim usage either, because a lot of people use it raw. They use it to get to places that, to get faster there, or to get there faster. But you can use it in battles and just win every single time just by stimming, like, after the first or second bullet. Yep. Yeah, like... Basically how I see stim and I'm a big I have a big problem with this that I need to work on as well But like a lot of people when they when they respawn the first thing they do is they just stim They just mash their stim button like they don't care what's going on. They don't like have any clue You know why they're stimming they just respawn and like stim I need, I need to go places fast I gotta go fast and they just hit stim and then you know They they use their stim up they get to where they want to go fast and then they don't have it And they have no ability when they get to their point that they were trying to get to and it's like they're just they're just hurting themselves like did you really need to get there that half a second faster. I don't know. Yeah. I, I I do that, but I do it only if I know, like using the information that you know my teammates give me. You know, for example, I died in a certain area, but my teammate killed that person. You know, why not? I'll use stim, get right back up there, wait a bit, take some cover. If I see somebody, you know, it's fine. I'll shoot. Uh, well, I get in a gunfight. Obviously, it's gonna be down. Um, but you know, if if you if you know like if you have an objective you know where you want to go you know that it's either being held by your allies at the moment or you know that it's been cleared already sometimes you can use that stim otherwise there's or if you really need to use it but you don't need to as well it's just more so a matter of whether or not you know the area is going to be clear or what you know what you're going to be doing when you get there fair enough I don't know. I, I try to use binding in, in gunfights in particular, just whenever I can. Like, I try to save it and, you know, I just wait for somebody to start shooting me and then I pop it. Because then I can just take extra bullets and, you know, just be tankier. Yeah. And it works well with the shotty because you can take cover behind the building, get that extra wall run, get that speed, and end up right in their face. Yep. You can use it to sur survive double nades as well. Double arc nades. Even not, if they're spammed. Not true. Depends how close they are to you. Like, even, if you know... You... If if you, no, if it's you're able all, to... it all depends on your uh, grenade timing, or no, um, your stim timing. I'm pretty sure if you're able to activate it before the arc net, before the first one explodes on you, you should be able to survive the second one. Well, I, I mean, just test around with it, but... Yeah, that'd, be something, that'd be something to test in more depth. I... I am pretty convinced that if, you know, if the if the nades aren't, like, if you're not at the very edge of it, like, even if you're stimmed, you're going to die. Because I have way too many deaths to where I stim before I'm even taking nades, and I'm still dying to two. Like, no one's shooting me, I'm just taking two nades and dying. Like, it's just, it's a little excessive sometimes. Hmm. I, yeah, I feel like, I, I think I've survived more arc nades stimming before they explode on me than stimming after the first one explode on me. And... I don't know. I think that's a, that's how I feel. I never actually tested it before, but more yeah. more so the times that I've survived, it's because I've pushed stim because I see that icon. And it makes sense in a way because think of it this way, you see the icon and any any distance that you put yourself away from the center of explosion will lessen the damage and you already have stim active. Mhm. Mm so stim's gonna help you get away from that center. Plus, it heals you. It's kind of just both both aspects really help you out. But it's 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 iffy sometimes, you know. Like it it's is. definitely you definitely have to do it. Like if you see that nade indicator, like I'm hitting stim every time. Like I'm just gonna mash my Q button. I'm stimming. But you know, oh, it, it's just kind of like a it's just kind of you gotta have faith thing. Yep, sixty percent faith, forty percent belief, or is it the other way around? Nope, that's right. <laughs> So I guess that pretty much covers it, guys. Um, so thanks for uh, thanks for coming on, helping me out. Yeah, I'll look through uh, some of my games if there's anything worth mentioning or anything worth showing.
Yeah, like I'll, I'll, um, I'm sure we're gonna, we're probably gonna pug today. So I'm gonna try and, you know, just do my best at playing mid. Like it's gonna be bad, but you know, I'm gonna try, and um, just get some footage of that too, and you know, can see what it looks like to be bad at mid, and then I can like get one of your guys and be like, okay, you see what it looks like to be bad. Here's what it looks like when someone is actually good at it does it. And that should hopefully be educational for people. So would you guys like to pimp your website that y'all use or anything like that? Oh god. <laughs> Maybe you have a mixtape to share? No, not yet. One in progress though. Oh. Uh -huh. And mixtape. Man, my album already be dropping, bruh. What's it gonna be called? Forty percent believe. Wow. You're gonna have crosses on the cover and everything, and yeah. sombrero wearing velociraptors with mustaches. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's about all we had for you this time. Uh, so thanks for listening. Hope that you learned a lot of new stuff. Um, special thanks to RA for helping me with all this and sharing all their knowledge with you guys. Uh, so be sure to check them out and support them, support their pugs. Uh, follow all the links in the description box down below. And we'll see you next time, guys. Take care.